Hi, folks, and welcome to the speedy review of the great wines that are up for the private barrel auction, the auction of Washington wines. We're joined right now by one of the great legacy winemakers of Washington, famous for his Leonetti fame, as well as Figgins. And today, Chris Figgins, welcome, is uh, bringing a very special wine from his Figgins Vineyard. And uh, Chris, welcome aboard. Hello, Bob. Yeah, thanks for thanks for having us. I'll talk first a little bit about uh, the vineyard itself. What's pretty unique about the Figgins Estate is it's probably the highest elevation vineyard in the state of any substantial size. Um, this particular wine comes from seventeen hundred feet of elevation, uh, which is very high. So it it the vineyard in general creates wines of uh, great depth, of generally speaking, uh, incredible longevity with great acid and tannin and a concentration of fruit that um, I really only see at high elevations in the Walla Walla Valley. You make a big issue about this, this concept of place. So how, what have you done to the Figgins Vineyard to define that sense of place? Yeah, so, you know, it's, it, it, it sits at the mouth of Mill Creek, which is one of the two major tributaries we have uh, that come into the Walla Walla Valley. And right at the very foothills of the Blue Mountains. So we get these really incredible nighttime winds that happen um, all during the growing season. And that, that, that drain straight out of the mountains, um, drain the place, give the wines a certain lift to them because of the, the the coolness that we get at night. We get incredible acid and it it really is a a special area. In fact, we're looking at making Mill Creek its own AVA, sub AVA within the Walla Walla Valley. And so um, the ones there are just are so unique, age worthy, um, dense, and uh, really deep soils being above the Missoula floods that happened. So they're you know at least ten feet uh, depth of lus and uh, just really remarkable wines. Well, outstanding as is this one. This is a a really spectacular Cabernet from the twenty two harvest, and you call twenty twenty two a miracle. Yeah, I, that's what we've called it internally as our team is the Miracle Vintage. You know, as it started out, I thought it was going to be another, you know, 1993, which only, you know, guys like you and I can remember, 93, <laughs> 2011, where it was incredibly cool vintage. And, you know, bud break was late, bloom was late. We were worried about, you know, halfway through the season, my goodness, are we ever going to be able to get this right? And then October was just one for the ages. It was just absolutely perfect the entire month. And and although it was a later vintage, we got everything ripe. And, and you know, that miracle didn't start till probably the, the third or fourth week of September where summer finally showed up. And so we were able to make some really incredible wines and what was overall a cool vintage. Why don't you describe this, this particular wine? It's the 2022 Cabernet Sauvignon from Figgins. Yeah, so uh, 100% Cabernet Sauvignon and and the cab off Mill Creek, as I've seen, as I've said before, can be, uh, in its youth, can be a, a tannic bruiser of a wine. Mm -hmm. The 22s in general, probably because of that warm finish, developed a polish to the the tannins that um, I think you'll see in this wine, an incredible density of fruit. And, um, you know, I find it to be more black fruited as opposed to, you know, red fruited that we often see in the south part of the valley of Walla Walla. And uh, just a really um, incredible density, um, some cocoa on it. Um, I get the smallest hint of eucalyptus in this wine, which is very unique. I tend to equate that with uh, either, you know, Australian wines or Napa Valley wines where they, they actually have eucalyptus trees and sometimes you'll pick that up. But I, I, I get the slightest hint of that, which is very unique for the 22s. I've never seen that before in, in my wines off of Figgins. Well, you ticked, you ticked all the boxes on. I'm looking at my tasting notes where you're talking and the penetration of this wine, the density, the power, black fruits versus red fruits. Um, there's, there's, instead of eucalyptus, for me, it was more sweet bay leaf, a little bit of dried thyme, and this little bit of rocky wet stone sort of thing uh, going on. A wonderful wine, an extraordinary wine, in fact. And congratulations, um, yeah. folks. Don't miss this wine. If you got a chance to bid on this, this is one to have in your cellar, offer to your guests. And um, in, in doing so, you're gonna support the future of Washington wine through the education and research programs at Washington State University. Chris, thank you. Thank you folks for joining us. Absolutely, happy to share this wine and uh, let's raise some money with it, all right?